Hello and welcome to Airports Revealed, a show in which we go behind the scenes exploring what makes airports around the world unique. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. I'll be your host. I've just landed here at Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport, an airport with massive history, incredible operations even to this day, and amazing plans for the future. Hope you'll join me as we check it out. First, the basics. Like most airports, this one developed over time. Unlike many, however, its location was selected, at least in part, with space in mind. So it grew, first as a hub for Delta Airlines and then as a cargo superpower. Today, it has four runways, the longest of which is 12,000 feet. That's long enough for just about anything aircraft manufacturers might throw at it. Despite being commonly known as Cincinnati, the airport occupies more than 7,700 acres in Kentucky. For comparison, New York's LaGuardia Airport is built on only 680 acres. This is a massive airport. Hey, what other airports uh, should we visit in this series? Leave a comment with your suggestions. CVG lost its status as a Delta hub back in 2017, which leaves us with the question, how does an airport adapt to that kind of change? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. Today, the airport is a focus city for Allegiant, Delta, and Frontier. But maybe it's best known as a cargo mega hub thanks to the fact that it's home to both Amazon and DHL. And today, you're going behind the scenes. This is Airports Revealed. My day began early at CVG, about 5.30, but I was already late. You see, air cargo has to be delivered to its destination by a specific date and time. Often, that means the next day by 10.30 in the morning. Because of that constant and inescapable drumbeat of time, there's only a very narrow window in which the work you see here can be done. But this dedicated team knows how to make it happen. In 2020, CVG ranked as the seventh largest cargo airport in North America, seeing some 1.2 million tons of freight pass through. Consider a package that's traveling from, say, New York to Tampa. It has to leave New York no later than 10 p.m., arrive at CVG between midnight and 2 a.m., be sorted by 4 a.m., and sent back out on another aircraft for Tampa by 6 a.m. When all of that happens, as it does nearly every night of every year at CVG, that package will get into the hands of an eager recipient on time. However, if anything in that chain is disrupted, a flight gets delayed, a package is misplaced, a mechanical issue arises, a runway closes, the best case scenario is an angry customer. At worst, there can be serious consequences. These packages might be mission critical deliveries. You can tell everyone here is serious about their work. As the sun rose, things started to ramp up over at the terminal as well. CVG has not always been a cargo superpower. The passenger side of the airport has changed a lot through the years. 1994 brought the addition of Concourse C as Delta's presence grew. But by 2010, many of those gates sat empty. By 2016, two terminals, one and two, were torn down, and 2017 brought the end of Concourse C. Today, only Terminal 3 and Concourses A and B remain. In the 1970s, Comair began operations with 30-seat turboprops based at this airport. In 1984, they became a regional carrier for Delta, and in 1993, became the launch customer for the CRJ-200, an airplane I love to hate. In the 1980s, CVG became a hub for Delta Airlines, peaking at 670 daily flights in 2005, including transatlantic flights. Air France even served CVG for a time. And then in September 2005, Delta declared bankruptcy and reduced CVG operations significantly. By 2008, they merged with Northwest when service at CVG was cut even further. Delta officially closed its hub at CVG in December 2017, and today, it's a focus city for the airline. Things continue to grow, change, and develop as needs arrive. One of many current projects at the airport is the addition of this larger, more convenient consolidated rental car facility, also known as a Conrack. My guide for the day was airport operations agent Chris Sundley, one of about 14,500 people who wear a CVG badge. We headed up to a disused ramp tower 
where Chris and I had a socially distanced conversation about his role at the airport. Chris, this would not have happened if it hadn't been for you. Thank you so much for inviting our viewers uh, to Cincinnati, uh, Northern Kentucky International Airport with you. We really appreciate it. What's your job? I work uh, airport operations here at CVG Airport. Um, essentially, my job is to make sure that everything on the airfield is safe for all of our passengers and our cargo operators. What would you say is like a typical day? What do you? What, how does it work for you? Yeah, so a typical day for me, since I work nights, um, usually it's come in, uh, making sure that our night inspection is completed uh, per FAA 139 standards. Just typically it lights out that we have to fix, you know, issuing notams, um, making sure wildlife stay off the airfield, uh, working with contractors and construction companies to make sure that they're safely working in the parameters, and then basically just making sure everybody gets from point A to B in a safe way. And then let's say that there's somebody who's watching this video who might have an interest in becoming an airport operations professional. So there's really no set way of doing it. Uh, some people go to college for it. Um, I attended the University of North Dakota and graduated this spring with a degree in management, a specialization in aviation. Um, I grew up as an aviation enthusiast my entire life, um, so always having that background. Um, basically just getting out in the workforce right away, you know, whether that's throwing bags for an airline or, um, you know, working in the terminal somewhere, just kind of seeing day-to-day -day operations. You know, always follow your dreams. I mean, follow your heart. I mean, you just wake up one day and you love aviation. Don't be deterred by what's going on right now. I mean, I'm sure certain things are turbulent, but I mean, if you really go after it and you love something that you do, I mean, there's always going to be a place for you. Great advice. Thank you again for your time, Chris. Really appreciate it. Now, I know we've got more to see, so let's go check it out. And wouldn't you know it, just as we wrapped up our conversation, that Aerologic 777 was starting its journey back to Europe. There's a lot to like about Chris Sunley's job. Airport operations professionals like him at airports around the world get to inspect runways. That means they have the opportunity to drive their vehicles down runways to ensure they're in proper working order and are clear of FOD or foreign object debris, which could prove catastrophic to an aircraft's engine. While we were inspecting runway 9, I couldn't help but notice the rubber buildup on this often used east-west cross runway. You see, every time an airplane touches down, it leaves a little bit of rubber on the runway. Chris and his operations colleagues check the amount of this rubber and clean it off regularly to ensure safe operations. Airport operations professionals like Chris have relative free range on the airport campus. They go where they're needed, and in the case of CVG, that could be nearly anywhere on this tremendous property. But perhaps the best part of his job? Getting up close and personal with these amazing machines. Nowhere on the campus of CVG is the complete transformation it's undergone more visible than in the southern section. It was there, in 1983, where DHL opened its international hub before moving north to Wilmington, Ohio in 2005, only to return four short years later in 2009. Today, cargo operations here are expanding even further as Amazon is building a facility so large, it's tough to fully comprehend. The future is incredibly bright as Amazon develops more than 900 acres of land to support a 3 million square foot building for an operation that will involve more than 85 aircraft each day. You can see why this is a great hub airport. Its location puts it within easy reach of most of the country's population, even today. Let's check out the terminal and concourses. They're linked together by escalators and moving walkways. The tunnel underneath Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky International Airport is two thirds of a mile long. And because it's so long, there's also a train. Passengers ascending this escalator are richly rewarded by a huge wall of windows and maybe even better, rocking chairs. Chris tells me it's not unusual to find somebody here taking a nap. One of the goals for Airports Revealed is to remind you that there's more to aviation than this gate and that jet bridge. Aviation is incredibly complex and airports are a key part of that. I'm looking forward to sharing more with you in future videos about why that is. Therefore, if you like travel and aviation, click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because if you do, you'll see even more videos like this.
One of my favorite elements is that the Cincinnati Museum Center has stocked the terminal with exhibits of all kinds. Oh, and there's even a place for the kids. In addition to a number of restaurants and shops, there are also several lounges. And for those seeking a bit of uh, nostalgia, my favorite, by far, required us to head back behind the scenes in Concourse A. Longtime Delta Airlines customers may remember Crown Rooms. These were the predecessors to today's Sky Clubs, and the skeleton of one remains at CVG. It was an amazing trip back in time. Hello, this is the 90s calling. We'd like our lounge back. Delta also has a newer Sky Club, more welcoming perhaps than the old Crown Room, located over in Concourse B. The airport is home to so much. There's also Delta Private Jets, which was recently bought by Wheels Up. Delta maintains a cargo operation of its own at the airport, as well as a maintenance facility. But perhaps one of the highlights of the airport is its exclusive section for plane spotters. This elevated park is the perfect place for aviation enthusiasts to get up close and personal with all of the action here. It has everything you'd need for a day full of aviation. Well, thanks Jet Setters for joining us today here at Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport. I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes experience and we look forward to seeing you fly in the sky. As always, be safe, stay healthy, and keep flying. And between now and the next time, see in the sky, or maybe on the ramp. Oh, blah, 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 blah. The only show, a new show. I, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not used to the little camera thing. I've landed the Cincinnati former Terminal C. Let's check it out together. It'll have to be lit today. No, that's not what I want to say. It has been each airport around the world unique. Not each airport, that would be quite a feat. And it's also useful for. I think it's just down there. Uh, to, 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 to.